Welcome to Frank Stiano Explains. Today's topic is merge sort, but merge sort done bottom up. As I hinted at in the notes, an alternative is to run merge sort bottom up, doing away with the recursion. Interesting, uh, doing away with the recursion. Uh, and I had an exercise 15 write pseudocode for the bottom up merge sort, or even better, write real code that runs and that you can debug uh, to understand all the nooks and crannies of this other way of doing things with particular respect to how much extra space is actually needed, which may not have the same obvious answer as when you do the thing top down. Anyway, I hope this video makes you want to go back to your editor and try things out for yourself. Uh, those of you who do will be rewarded later on in life at some point. Enjoy this video, stick a like on it if you do, and above all, enjoy your programming. That's what makes you strong in algorithms. You've already been introduced to the merge sort algorithm, which is based on the idea of the merge operation. So merge is when you, you have two, two runs which are sorted to 3, 5, 11, 16, 21, 4, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 22. So these two runs are already sorted and the merge operation consists on making um, a whole sorted sequence of the union of these two by always taking the smallest from each as appropriate. The merge operation has this uh, peculiarity that it cannot be done in place. You need to have some extra space. I'm going to use a CD here as a separator so that I don't get confused as to where our two runs are. Um, if I just use if I just use the space I have here, I cannot do the merge sort because I need to take um, I need to take the smallest one of these two, which is this one, and I need to put it somewhere, which would logically be here. So I first need to have some spare space. How much spare space? Well, uh, certainly this will work if I have as much spare space as the whole of this, because um, clearly uh, there the space for as many items as there will eventually be. This may be somewhat wasteful. I may be able to get away with less, and I shouldn't use any more than, than necessary. But uh, let's uh, revisit the issue of how much spare space is needed uh, a little later. Uh, initially, let's start by just giving ourselves as much space as we want. So let's make enough space at the start that I'm sure I will be able to fit everything. And let's take the smallest of the items from the two rounds, which in this case is two. Now, let's see it slightly deeper than this. So the smallest between 4 and 3 is 3, the smallest between 4 and 5 is 4, the smallest between 8 and 5 is 5, the smallest between this is 8, the smallest between this is 9, the smallest between this is 10, the smallest between this is 11, the smallest between this is 12, between this is 13, between this is 16, between this is 21, and now 22. And so I've obtained, I've merged these two already sorted runs into one more run, and I can do that in linear time because every uh, every element, uh, whether it's in the first or second run, is only analyzed once. So I do a comparison and then I move. And uh, this is all great, but of course I've only done the top level merge operation. And when I have my, my jumbled up stuff, if I divide it into two, uh, in order to obtain a sorted run and another sorted run, I must first sort. The first part, which I do recursively by invoking merge sort on this, which in turn means I'll have to split that in half and then merge sort this and merge sort that, and then I'll have to split that in half, merge sort this, merge sort that. Now, never mind the fact that they're already sorted because I just did the sort, but uh, in the general case, I would have to keep re recursing into the various halves all the way down on, on both sides. Now, um, when I do sort my comics, um, in real life. I do use merge sort, but I don't use the recursive version of merge sort because it's a pain to um, keep track of, you know, basically what would be in the stack, where do I have to get back to. So I'm, I'm trying to jump them up in some random way, as far as a human can do randomness. Okay, so the way I do actually merge sort them um, as books is that I say, well, if I did the merge sort, I would have to go from, you know, the half, 
then it goes half, 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 until I get to something that's too small to need sorting, when it's just one book, it's already sorted. And then I have to pair this up in, in twos, and then in fours, and then in eights, and in sixteens, and so on. So why don't I just start from the bottom layer without any recursion, and I say, uh, for every pair of adjacent books, I sort them. So uh, 410 is already sorted, 221 is already sorted, 311 is already sorted, 1632 is already sorted, 129 is not sorted, I have to rearrange it. 513 is already sorted, I'm lucky, and 8 is the odd one out, doesn't have a pair, so I leave it as it is. Now I do another run through it, uh, and I sort pairs into uh, quadruplets by using the merge operation. So let me just uh, separate this out like this. So this pair and this pair, uh, the best one is 2, so I stick it here. Um, this pair and this pair, the best one is 4, and then uh, I have... Uh, I've lost count of what was uh, one run, another run, I need to have another placeholder, but anyway, now this part is sorted. So let me take another uh, CD as a placeholder, and I'm now doing... Uh, these two were okay. uh, I don't want them to get in the way so you don't see the numbers. Let me see them slightly. So of these two, now uh, the emerging one is this. So I put it here. I need another placeholder to say this. That's the finished part. Uh, then of these two, the best one is here. So. That's that. And then I finished my first half, so the second half I just copied it across. There we go. So my next quadruplet is this. And that's uh, best one is this five. So I put it here. That's the done ones. Best one of these is the nine. Best one of these is the twelve. And then comes the thirteen. And then this uh, quadruple is incomplete, there's only the 8, so I leave it there. And now it's the turn of the uh, quadruplets to be merged. So first I have to do these, these two. And um, the best of these is 2. Best of these is three. Best of these is the four. Best of these is the ten. Best of these is the eleven. Best is sixteen. Best is twenty one. And then the twenty two. And then I have this four and this incomplete four. And if I put the result in here, then the best of these is 5, the best of these is 8, and then I, I've run out of the second one, so I will just copy all the elements of the first one, and there we go. And then I finally do my last pass, merging these two uh, sorted um, runs, this first half and second half, with half in air quotes, because, uh, because of course, the the whole thing was not divisible by two. Now, because I was doing this on the bookshelf, I um, I just shuffled things around without making a clear um, indication of what was my spare space. But it's, it's obvious, as we said, that I do need some spare space. And if I'm using an array, I can just copy into things that are overwritable. So I, I'm not going to say empty, overwritable, is that's whatever was there, I don't care anymore. How much of this spare space should I reserve? For an arbitrary number of items n, then clearly, as I said, if I allocate another n as the spare space, I will be fine no matter what. So if I have here um, 13 books, then if I allocate another 13 cells, in fact, if I take this 13 and I make space here, and I say, I will stick my things uh, somewhere else. These things are obviously fall down. <laughs> Probably with physical items as opposed to abstract virtual cells inside the computer. Yeah, I need 
I'm going to film that. Anyway. Uh, leg space. So, if I do this and I stick them, stick those 13 here and I have 13 spaces here, then clearly I can merge the two halves and everything comes here, we'll have space. Uh, but I can be somewhat more economical than that, uh, since I'm splitting this in two halves, and the halves may not be exact because half of 13 is six and a half, but I'm gonna have one side that is uh, seven and another side that is uh, six, as opposed to six and a half and six and a half. Um, then um, I could have two runs like this, and if I move the largest run into spare space, then I need um, spare space equal to n number of items divided by 2, uh, taken the ceiling, which is 7 in this case. And then that will fit that. I park this 7 in the spare space. And then the 7 spare cells in here can be filled up by this 7 over there, if, if always I get the smallest one from there. Um, well, this one's not sorted, let's take it here. Uh, in this case, it is true that uh, the smallest item always comes from this run, never... Well, no, it's not true because five and eight are there. Okay, sorry, I misspoke. Uh, let's imagine that this thing always gives me the first item. Still, there would be space for all of them because I just made the space by taking them out over here. Uh, if instead I have to take the first one always from here, it would also fit because this one was the largest of the two, so this one definitely fits. And if I have to take a mix from both, then whenever I take one from here, I know they will fit because that's where they came from. And whenever I take one from there, so two, three, four, I take from here, and then five, I take from here. As I take five here, I'm using up a space that would maybe mean that these ones don't fit anymore, but actually I'm freeing up one space that was here, so I have exactly the same space as if I hadn't taken anything from there. So I'm guaranteed that these ones will always go back where they were. So basically by using this strategy, I will always be able to uh, fit everything back into my array. Having, having used spare space equal to um, n half ceiling, ceiling of n half. So this looks like I could uh, just go home free, but uh, not if I am doing my uh, bottom-up merge sort, because uh, because when I do bottom-up merge sort, at the top level I'm not splitting my uh, array in half, as I, as I am when I'm doing the top-down merge sort. When I'm doing a bottom-up, I am pairing things up uh, in, in twos, and then in fours, and in eights, and so on. This means that uh, at the last of my bottom-up passes, which would be the top level one, it's a merge between a power of two, eight books, and the rest to whatever I had. So in this case, uh, it was five books. Now, eight is a power of two, five is, is, is not a power of two, and it's the rest, but eight exceeds uh, the ceiling of uh, n over two, because n over two was six and a half, and the ceiling of that is seven, and so eight would not fit if I allocate myself seven. However, I know that merge sort can work with just seven cells of, uh, of scratch space, but bottom-up merge sort does not have enough if I just give it uh, the seven cells, because this, um, this first run won't go into it. So is bottom-up merge sort uh, m less space efficient than top-down merge sort? Uh, maybe it's just an artifact of the fact that I'm selecting to take out the first one. What if I took out the second one, which instead fits? The second one does fit, because it's definitely, um, since it's the remainder after having taken out this thing, it's definitely going to be less than half, um, and uh, uh, less than ceiling of n over 2. So if I stick that into my scratch space, then uh, things will work, except for the fact that the spare space I have over here is not really the spare space I wanted, because if I fit things in here, so I've, I had these five, uh, five books here at the end of my array, and I take them out and I put them into the stretch space. This one doesn't stay 
ってデスマーホーピンだって It is more stable than a CD If I take those five and I stick them here in a scratch space that is certainly uh, large enough then by the time I, I take uh, one from here one from blah 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 and I refill that then they will all be uh, where they were before and um, and that's fine well that's not fine because if I take the first uh, the smallest of the two items of the two runs the smallest would be this one and it would have to be at the beginning of the array whereas the spare space I have is over here it starts from the middle well it's kind of middle and goes up to the end so uh, if I copy these two into here uh, it would work for a while uh, and then I have to copy the three then I have to copy the four and the five and so on and at some point I would run out of space here and I'd have some extra space here which I don't really want so what should I do? Well, a moment's thought uh, shows a smarter way of doing things, which is to fill up this empty space, which is in, the, in fact at the end of the array, uh, fill it up from the end. So instead of looking for the smallest, I look for the biggest. So 21 and 22, the biggest is 22. So I stick it in the place of the maximum item of the array, which it is because it's the maximum of these two runs. So it must be the maximum of the whole thing. And then the maximum of these two rounds, 21 and 13, is 21, so I stick that here. Maximum of 16 and 13 is 16, so I stick that here. And I'm basically doing the operation uh, in reverse, starting from the other end. But it works just the same, and it fills up the array just as it should. Uh, highest of this is this, and then is this. And then I've exhausted my uh, second run, so all I have is the first run, which is already, in fact, already in place. Uh, and so uh, there we go so for the bottom up in this case uh, here's one strategy where I um, I change the operation slightly to uh, ensure that I still fit within um, the space of ceiling of n over 2 so I think it would be instructive uh, for you to program up a bottom-up merge sort. If I, there's an exercise in the handout that says program a bottom-up merge sort. Without this explanation you have to work all this out by yourself. I think that after having seen it in action uh, I think I, I pointed at many of the subtleties and see if there's any that are left for you to figure out and, and debug. I, I highly recommend you do this on your own uh, and then gain a greater understanding of what goes on. I hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next video.